Hi, welcome to week three. Uh, this week we're going to be doing a, a piece based on this picture here, which is the Norwegian church in Cardiff Bay. And it also houses Roald Dahl's um, gallery. So Roald Dahl has an association. He was baptised here. So I'm going to mainly focus this week on perspective. I know a lot of you struggle with perspective. Um, so I'm going to sh just take you through a few basic principles and then we're going to do this painting in a pet. We're going to draw it this picture, should I say. <laughs> we're going to draw, the draw this picture out and use pen and ink and a little bit of watercolour and or acrylic, depending on what you use, to paint it. All right. Thanks for joining in again. Um, we've got lots and lots of, well, I've got lots and lots of ideas for future masterclasses. So um, you, you should get two more weeks for September because it's a five week month. Uh, and then we'll move on into October and November and, it, and very much into the autumn, which is a lovely idea. I like, I like this time of year when things change really quickly. All right, hope you're all well and that you're staying safe. Um, and I'll see you in the next stage, which will be just a little bit of an introduction in, into simple single point and double point perspective. Okay, see you in a bit. Okay, here we go just got a piece of plain paper here. I just want to take you through a couple of principles with regard to perspective. Okay, so first of all, single point perspective. So we've got a, a horizon. Okay, so this is single point perspective. Okay. So on that horizon, there will be a vanishing point. If you draw any square or shape or whatever, that's going to form a building or whatever you want, all of the points, when, when it comes to single point perspective, all of these points will end up at the same point of perspective so it you wouldn't see this because it would be on the inside of the building but that would go to there okay so if you need a ruler to draw lines with then just join those points up if you look at buildings on a street for example they will all join up to the same point so imagine that you're drawing a terraced house so that's the other the end wall of that terraced house and you've got if you split this down the middle and draw a line going upwards then you can draw the gable end on now that point there will also go to vanish to that point there okay so then you've got your roof so run your line parallel like that and there's your roof okay any windows or doors i'll just do a big door here so if i just put a big door on so we've got verticals which run parallel with these lines here yeah your door so put the point that's closest to you and then draw a line to it that would be the angle that's on your door if you were drawing a chimney, then you would again put the lines parallel and this line would be parallel. Okay, so single point perspective. This is single point perspective. All the points, like these, on the chimneys, on the doors, the end of the house, on the next chimney, they all vanish to this point. They all join up. This is when drawing houses that are all the same, like a terraced block or something like that. So this point will always 
join up. So you've got a box, horizon, vanishing point. That point will join to that one. That point will join to the same one. This is if you're looking at a gable end flat on. Okay, that point will join up to there. Yeah, so you've got a box basically, and you can put a parallel line for the side of the house. You can put uh, divide the gable end in half, and then that will give you a point to put the roof on. Now, this point would also vanish to that point, single point. Run this line parallel to that one, and so on. And as you get further and further away, this distance here becomes less. So narrow it down. Vertical lines always. Same with chimneys. So the chimney, we're looking at the gable end flat on again. The chimney would vanish to that point too. So that would give you the side of that chimney. Same here. Yeah. Okay, and so on. Same with the door. I just put a big door here. The top right corner of the door would vanish. So that would give you your door frame, the top of your door frame. And the same with windows then you could easily put in all of your doors all the way down because you've got that line to cling to. Same with a window. Yeah? So on. Okay. So with the double, the two point perspective or the double point perspective, you've got the gable end on an angle as well. So that would be the corner of the house. Horizon is here or somewhere there. So you would have one point vanishing off here, another point vanishing off here. So it's two point perspective. So for this side of the house, all the lines would come there. For that side of the house, they would vanish to that point. So again, I'm going to put a slight gap in between to represent a road. Slight gap. Slight gap making sure that you get narrower and narrower every time. So again, divide the gable end and put a roof on. That point there would vanish to there for the gable ends. Yeah, this point would, so you want the side of the, the roof like that. That would also, this point, would vanish to this one, would vanish to this one, and so on. Use a ruler if you feel you have to. So that was the roof for this block, that's the roof for that block, that's the roof for that block, that's the roof for that block. Again, work vertically for the side of the houses, run your line parallel to this one for the roof, narrow your distance between these two points every time you go back and you'll soon have a terraced house set up. So again for a door just doing this very basically so that you can see what what's going on. All right, the road would also work to the same point. Maybe you want to put another row of houses in along here or a wall or a fence or whatever. This point would give you the other side of the road. Maybe it curves around like that and so on. Okay, so that's really basic um, two-point perspective. You need to see this working in real life. So go and look at a row of houses or even just a row of trees. You know, they would work in the same way. So, you know, you've got a tree here. 
like that. As we go back, they get smaller. Like that. Um, you can work the same theory into clouds. Like this. Cloud, cloud, cloud. Okay, I'll talk about perspective a bit more another time. Um, but I don't want to overwhelm you just at this stage. Okay, so now to talk about this. So I've taken the photograph of the Norwegian church uh, in Cardiff Bay. So if you want to go and visit this, go and have a look. It's a really pretty church. Um, and I've just drawn, what I tend to do is I tend to get my ruler and I draw onto the image itself. I know this is difficult to do if you're looking at the image in real life but for that you can use a uh, plastic transparent grid or um, even hold up your ruler there's also a tool that you can make which gives you angles um, but again I'll talk about that another time but on this image because we've got this photograph we might as well use it you can see all the lines so we've got two point uh, perspective here so we've got one element of perspective disappearing over here and then we've got another element of perspective disappearing over here. So it's the same as this, two-point perspective. Okay, so we're going to work to that. You've just got to look to see which perspective is being used. So if that bottom of that line is disappearing over here, the bottom of this line is disappearing over here, this one over here, all the rest are going to this point over here. All right, so you should be able to roughly draw this out for your pen and ink drawing all right again i'll send you images of these so that you can have a look at them so i've drawn out mine here so i replicated the lines of perspective so one vanishing point is right over here somewhere the other vanishing point is right over there i've done it onto watercolor paper um, so if you're going to use watercolour with this then some of these lines will be a bit heavy so as I said just take a putty rubber and just rub them out ever so lightly but these points will really help you can you see that line there this this piece here is quite complicated because it's it's almost like a gable end pointing at us so this is the only one that doesn't work to these uh, two perspectives because it's flat onto us. So you just basically draw the base of the window frame and this straight, whereas all the others are at an angle. So this section vanishes over here and this section vanishes over there. All right, so have a go. Like I said, drawing onto the picture itself, I find that really helpful. So take a ruler and just draw the lines out and it really makes you focus on where those lines are. All right, so have a go at that and then have a go at drawing this. You might be more comfortable sort of freehand drawing it to begin with, but it is basically just a rectangular structure, you know, and all the boxes are within it. So you've got a rectangle sort of here and you've got another rectangle here so if you can get the basic structure in and also use measuring, so you can do this in different ways. You can actually hold your pencil up if you're looking at the object itself, but you can easily measure with your pencil. So put the tip there and then draw your finger up and down the pencil to get the width. So if you're working like to like, like this is A4 and this is A4, then you can get the measurement there, look, see? So you can put a point there like that and then put a point there like that and you know that you've got the width right the same with the height so put your tip of your pencil somewhere and then move your finger down to where i don't know if you can see that no tip of your pencil and then move your finger up and down according to what bit you're measuring and then again put your pencil top there and then make a mark where the other point is and measure like that the other thing you can do is just put your pencil on an angle measure it 
and then carefully just move it over and then you've got an angle to draw to you put the point there and point there and then link the uh, measurements up use your ruler okay so just have a go at drawing this out get it to this stage um, what you need to do uh, before we put any watercolor on this is we need to go over it with pen so I'm going to take a um, now you can use anything you can use a biro you can use a fiber tipped pen you can use um, I've got some nice pens somewhere but I don't know what I've done with them um, anyway okay so you know you can just use a simple biro you can use one of these mark pen CD markers but you must make sure that your ink is waterproof okay um, the reason being is if we're going to put some color on this afterwards then you need it to be waterproof so once you've tested just take a piece of paper and just test it by putting some pen down and then getting a bit of water I just got some on my finger here and rubbing it over the top and if it doesn't move as in bleed if it doesn't bleed then it means it's permanent always check your pens even though it says permanent it may not be permanent <laughs> so always check so the next thing to do is to start to fill this in so take your marker pen whatever you've got and you can get these in different colors I talked about these when I went to the range you can get these fiber tip pens now and they come in different colors which is really useful so if you don't like black you can use a different color so again just carefully observe the picture that I've given you have a good look at it before you start make sure you're seeing it properly so that you don't make things up and you're just going to go around now after you've done that and just fill in these marks now you can see when I originally drew it that my two vertical lines here were slightly off kilter so I, I readjusted them make sure you make your readjustments before you put any pen on because once you've got the pen on it's not coming off it's permanent remember so make your adjustments make sure the drawing is as perfect as you want it to be before you start putting any pen on here go carefully and I recommend that you always draw across like this the paper rather than trying to do vertical lines like I've been doing here I've had lots of practice so I'm not too bad at it but it's much easier to draw across a work rather than drawing up and down you tend to sort of lose your perspective when you do that so just Go slow, take your time, have a cup of tea every now and again. So I'm going to do this. So ideally, turn and draw. Turn and draw. Okay, it's just a lot easier. I'm just going to pause this just for a moment I'm going to put it on um, time lapse so that you can see this but speed it up okay
Okay, so here we are with the almost finished um, piece. I've outlined most of the chapel with these graphic line markers. No, sorry. Uh, what have I done with it? The other one somewhere. <laughs> The uh, CD marker that I had and then I put in detail with this graphic line marker. This is 0 0.2 So all the lines that you see here are using this. All right, so um, Yeah, if you've got these line markers, that's brilliant if you haven't don't worry But it would be good if you could have two different thicknesses of line as I've got here now what I need to do now is using a putty rubber and again if you haven't got a putty rubber just make sure that your um, normal rubber is ultra clean and we're just going to rub out the excess lines that we've got on this watercolour paper. Now you may have decided that you're not going to put pen and ink on and all that sort of stuff and you just like a line drawing. If that's the case then you can use any um, kind of paper that you want. You could use coloured paper if you wanted just to put the um, pen onto and you can also increase the detail if you want to so you don't have to stop where I've stopped with the pen process of this piece Okay, so just make sure that all your lines are rubbed out because once you put the watercolour paper, you obviously can't rub out the lines, the watercolour paint on. And this is what a uh, putty rubber does. As it, as it wears out, it sort of rubs off in bits. So just make sure that all your marks that you do not want, this is for the watercolour part or the ink part, um, are gone. So I think that's about right. Again, putty rubber because it's softer and it's less, um, it has less impact on the watercolour paper itself. So we've got to this stage. Now, when you put the watercolour on, um, you can put it on a stick or a stick and or as thin or as bright or as pale as you want it. I'm just going to remove this under here so it doesn't get wet. Okay, so yeah you can apply as much or a li as little paint as you want to this you can also apply paint and then let it dry and then you can work on top of it using permanent markers as long as you're using permanent markers all right so the church itself is white the, these are wood panels i've only put very minimal line um, on here to represent the wood you do not need to include every single line on those wooden sections if you do it ends up looking more like an illustration I mean if you like that then that's great you carry on um, but I just want a suggestion really the eye only needs a little bit of detail and then it sort of makes sense it goes oh there's lines there they're obviously sort of um, horizontal lines it must be wood okay painted wood so that's all you need is a suggestion the roof itself is very dark slate I think so I'm going to use a Payne's grey for the roof I'm not going to put it on too dark because I want this to be a fairly subtle addition of colour so just a suggestion and also if you leave little Sort of gaps white bits that doesn't matter either it actually looks quite nice in places can you see like that so again in with a nice small pointed brush so that you can really get into those corners if you need to this is also roof and this and the spire is also roof so as I said, um, Roald Dahl, who was born in Wales, um, was baptised here, which is why there's a Roald Dahl gallery inside this church. But it was built 
for the Scandinavian settlers that settled in Cardiff near the harbour. So I don't know whether they built it or whether it was built for them. Okay, so there you go, there's the dark of the roof. If you wanted to put some suggestion of um, line in, you could just sort of take your brush and just again dip it into your Payne's Grey or your black or whatever you've got and just put some very soft suggestion of line into that wet watercolour. Alright, and you can repeat that, you can go over it with pen, whatever. Now your windows should be Payne's Grey. Uh, just put a little touch of blue into it. Could be any blue. And it will give that impression of the fact that the windows are reflecting the sky. So the panes of glass would have this colour in. And again, I like to leave little bits with this technique, which is pen and ink or, or watercolour and ink. You can use acrylic inks, um, watercolour ink or just normal ink if you've got it. You can also, uh, there's a YouTube uh, tutorial um, on how to remove ex oh, well, leftover ink from felt tips on my channel. So you could use those as well. You could use, uh, uh, there's also another um, tutorial on how to make your own ink from plants and various household items like coffee and things like that so you know there's a variety of things that you could use in the house if you haven't got inks um, or just use watercolour like I'm doing here so I've got a little bit of green excess green on my palette from the previous tutorial so I'm just going to use now this is a mark can you see that that just appeared there that is from, would you believe, from a silverfish. And I have a huge issue in this studio <laughs> with silverfish. And what they do is they come along and they eat my watercolour paper. And I can't actually see it until I paint onto it. So you can see they sort of come along and they, they're like hoovers and they just sort of eat the surface of the paper. And apparently they also really like watercolour pigment. Okay, so it turns out that my uh, camera memory was full. So I've got a slight break here and I've already painted the sky <laughs> and done the shadows. So we got up to, um, we put some of the roof on and a little bit of green. But that was it, I think. So I mixed up some green to put here. And some green here and I mixed up some burnt umber to put on the building in the distance and the same here with the sky all I did was I put some water down first so I'll just put an extra bit of sky in here put some water down and then add in the color like so and what the water does is it it disperses it and makes it softer so that you don't get any hard edges all right and it gives you a much softer sky so if I do that again here like so and then just add a little bit I've, I've just used a cobalt blue here um, but again if you're using ink you can use whatever blue you've got and just put the water down first so it softens into the sky okay the white areas will obviously resemble a little bit of cloud I used Payne's Grey on the roof and you can come back in afterwards once it's dry and just put in some linear marks like this just to suggest a little bit of tile on the roof like this um, and then I used a variety of tones of that same colour, that grey colour 
just to put in the shadows on this building. I put a very light coat on here, but the other two I left completely white because I wanted the drama of the light on the building. And then I used a fairly dark tone here, which I think I'll put an extra layer on thinking about it because I want it to be really sharp. So I'm just going to put an extra dark layer on top of that section there just because it's such a strong shadow and it also really illuminates that area and there's a little bit of it sort of fighting over here so I'm just going to put a bit in there and then I also put the same colour along these boards that have been painted black along the bottom okay um, you can add as much or as little detail as you require to this image. You can add more lines, you can do it once it's dry, you can add more pen on top, you can add more colour, you can add more detail, you know, there's no reason why you can't go in and put some, you know, slightly darker lines in where some of the boards are, like so. But don't overdo it. Less is more with these sort of paintings, but I want you to be happy with the result also. So, you know, if you need more detail, then put it in. You can put some more lines. Again, these must follow the perspective. Again, those go down that way because they go to that perspective. Same here. That one goes down that way. That side of the turret should be a little bit darker than the other side and so on oh that actually that bit also needs to be a little bit darker doesn't it because it's in shadow same as this all right same with the greens you can put some more I can sort of disguise that mark there that I was talking about which is the silverfish mark a little bit by adding in some more tone you can add some more tone into the bushes in the background again as you go further away less detail less color okay i hope you've enjoyed this um the finished piece is up to you make sure you always sign your work i sign with pencil because it lasts the longest um, if you wanted to add some more crosses, more detail in the windows, the windows are actually, um, they're not stained glass, but they are broken up into, you can see the detail on this window on the side here, so you can add that in. I may fiddle with this, I'm going to let it dry, look at it again, and then I'll see if I want to put any more um, detail in. Okay, check out my YouTube uh, short videos, they will give you some ideas on colour mixing, especially for greens and um, how to use pens and things like that. Where to buy pens if you want to go out and buy yourself some. Um, don't forget to subscribe to my YouTube channel. If you're a member, you might be a member with me, um, but subscribe to my YouTube channel and you'll get updates on all the small tutorials that I put out. So you'll get sent a message when I upload them. All right. I hope you're enjoying yourself. I hope you managed to do some of the sunflowers. Um, don't feel rushed. Just do these things in your own good time. Send me pictures. If you've got any questions, just send me a picture and say this bit. I didn't know how to do this bit or this bit. I didn't know how to mix the color or whatever. Um, I may miss out things as I go along and I don't really know if I'm missing things out or not so it's really helpful for you to tell me uh, uh, if I'm sort of rushing things or not explaining things properly all right have a great week and I will see you next time bye